Is your dehydrator too hot? Hi folks, it's Darcy from thepurposefulpantry.com and first let me say I'm sorry about the joke, but I had to do it. What we're doing today is testing our dehydrator to make sure it's heating at the temperatures that you set it to heat at. The reason we wanna do that is a couple of things. If your dehydrator is running too low, you may have a safety issue with proteins that need to be at a minimum 145F, uh, 60C uh, for beef, and then a minimum of 160F, which is 70C for chicken and other poultry. Uh, in order to make sure that your food is running at temperatures to keep that food safe. Now also on this, the other side is that you wanna make sure that your dehydrator runs at appropriate temperatures below that because it is an issue of saving vitamins and saving quality of food. So if you're putting herbs in your machine and you run it at 160, uh, 70 C you're burning that you're burning those herbs. They're going to get, they're going to lose their flavor. They're going to lose a lot of the, the nutrients in them and they're going to lose a lot of that oil. And so they don't taste good and they don't store well. And it's one thing that you might see when yours get really brown, uh, especially after storage for a couple of days, you start seeing they turn brown. It's because they've just been depleted. You've baked them more than you have actually preserved them. So conversely, you also want to make sure that your machine dries as low as it says it goes, because if you do a raw food dial or you're wanting to keep all of the nutrients in your food possible, you want to dry at 115F, 46C and below. Um, and so if your machine's not drying that low, then you're running the risk of losing more nutrients for something that you've been trying. Also, right in the middle of the scale, from 125 to 30, 135, 52C to 57C, or in that range is where most fruits and vegetables are dried for most people. However, things like citrus and tomatoes can get overheated and they get they turn dark, and that's the natural sugars darkening from too hot of a temperature. So if you're drying your fruit at 135 and you notice that it's always kind of dark, it may mean that your machine is running a little too high, or it just means that your food had a lot of sugar in it and you need to learn to turn that temperature down some and that way you'll be safe, but at least from the browning. But at least you know where your machine is running so you can make those adjustments accordingly. Okay, why would you test it? Well, one, for those reasons, but two, if you're buying something used from a marketplace or from a thrift store, or if you've been given a machine from a friend or family, you wanna make sure that machine is actually working the way it's supposed to work. So we're looking to test to make sure that we just know how our machine runs the same way that you wanna do for your oven. Uh, because you may have an oven that runs five degrees less than what you set it at, or it, it tends to burn things, so you know to set it down a little bit. Knowing the characteristics of your dehydrator will help you dry better. Okay, so how do we do this? First, we're gonna talk about this cabinet style machine, then we'll talk about the stackables in just a minute, and we're gonna look at our tools first. On the inside here, you can see, let me get the, the window from not reflecting. This is a regular oven thermometer. It's really inexpensive. They run from five to $10 from Amazon, from a kitchen gadget store, Target, uh, Walmart, wherever you get things from like that, you can get these and they're very inexpensive. And of course, I'll leave links down below if you need to look at them. So what I do, uh, also the other two versions that you can have of this or some other versions of things you can use is a probe thermometer like this, which has a wire lead that goes to a sensor at the end like this. I no longer have that because we don't use this anymore for anything other than an extra timer, but you can set this machine that when it hits a certain temperature, it goes off. And so you know that's what the temperature is reading. Um, you can use this and you can put the probe inside of your machine and lay it there and this can just stick on the outside like that um, or on the surface whatever and it will tell you what your machine is running you can also use something that's called an instant read thermometer like this which is what you would put into meat and it instantly reads what that temperature is um, you can set it to what you need it to be it re it it actually will read the air around it uh, and whatever you, that you put the probe into. The problem with this is that not all of them will, let me turn it on, not all of them will just stay on forever, but if yours will, if yours works, then you can just lay it on top of your tray and just let it sit like that and read. The problem with this is, is that you can't necessarily see the temperature, so you wanna try to make it to where you can see it uh, because anytime you open the machine to test, you're losing that heat. So if you use this, sorry, if you use this, make sure you give it plenty of time to test. All right, 
So another option might be a thermal gun like this. Now this is the one that we happen to use in our home to test for temperatures for our body, uh, but it does have a, 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 you can go from body to food to surface like that. But there are these that are thermal guns that you can use for food. What this does is it tests the surface temperature of something. So it won't necessarily give you a true reading on your dehydrator because you would need to open it and test. And the minute you open your door, just like your oven, you're gonna lose a lot of heat pretty quickly. So I don't recommend these. Um, and there may be some other kinds of, of thermometers that you can use too. Just look to make sure that it will work in the style machine you have. So what I do is I put my thermometer in, I hang it off of the end of a shelf, I turn my machine on to the lowest temperature, which for mine is 95F35C, and I wait for 15 minutes, and then I look to see what it's running at. If it gives me a true temperature within a degree or two, then I'm happy. And then what I do is then turn it to the highest temperature to see where it runs at that point. Give it 15 more minutes, because if I have opened the door, it needs to reheat. Uh, but it also needs time to get up there. Then I can look at that and see what happens. Now, if you have a stackable machine, what you want to do is stack your trays up to the minimum that your manual says that it should run at. Now, you may have a, a stackable that has 10 trays, but it says minimally it needs to have four to work efficiently. Then you can stack your four trays. You can use the probe style thermometer to lay the probe in your machine and then test from outside of it. That works the best. But an instant read will work as well as long as your instant read will stay on long enough to, 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 to have a true temperature. This, These kind of oven uh, thermometers like this don't work so well in some of those because you don't have a way to hang it and you also give it the same amount of time give it 15 or 20 minutes to heat up fully and then test the temperature at that point so mine has been running for quite a while uh, and so we're gonna look to see where it should be it's currently set at 160 F and this is running at about 158 so it's running about two degrees le less than it should be now what does that tell me it tells me that when i tested it at 95 it was right on when i tested it at 160 it's a it's a degree or two less so what do you do if your if your dehydrator is not heating up as much as it needs to heat now if you're doing proteins again the option is to put it into the oven at 250 degrees for 10 minutes to make sure it gets that internal temperature up as high as it needs to go and to stay safe, which is 160 F for chicken, uh, 145 for beef, okay? Um, that way you know for sure that it's right. Um, now, what if it runs too hot? Well, for jerky, that doesn't matter, then you're good. But for everything else, running too hot may mean you're losing more nutrients, uh, you're affecting the sugars, the natural sugars in a lot of those foods that they're gonna brown too fast and so that you're gonna get food that comes out looking burned all the time. Uh, and like I said, you're gonna lose more nutrients because vitamins A and vitamin C, the higher temperature you go, the longer that you cook it, you lose a lot more of it. So if it's running too hot, you may find that things don't turn out well. Um, and then you're gonna wanna talk to your manufacturer. If you're not good with adjusting that temperature down when you set your temperature, if it's running consistently at 140 when you needed it to be 120, then that may be a point where you have to decide, do I just adjust the temperature or do I talk to my manufacturer and get a new machine? Those are your options, okay? But just like an oven, each of these will have a personality of its own that makes it run a few degrees off, and that's fine, you can adjust for that. But if you're seeing consistent large gaps of temperature change, you might wanna to talk to the manufacturer about getting a new machine. So if you wanna learn more about learning how to dehydrate food, check out this playlist right here. It, I go from the very beginning all the way through teaching you how to dehydrate, and it's worth your watch. And until I see you again next time, happy dehydrating.